Previously only available on the cut page, you can now turn on fixed playhead by accessing the timeline menu here on the edit page. So let's go ahead and turn this on. You will notice that the playhead is going to snap into the middle of the timeline here and it will lock it in place. So when we start the playback or when we try to uh, you know, navigate around the timeline, everything will revolve around the playhead itself and the playhead is not moving. So this is of course quite different than if we don't have this turned on. So let's just turn this off and then this will restore it to the default setting. When we do this, we could potentially run into a situation like this where we couldn't find the playhead. And in order to find the playhead, then in this case, we would have to rely on the little red cube at the bottom there. Uh, if we click that, that will take us then to the playhead itself. So with fixed playhead turned on, you now will always have visibility of the playhead. Another thing you will notice here is that when we zoom in and zoom out the timeline, everything will zoom around the playhead as well. So this is very consistent and it can be quite helpful. Then let's say if we don't have this turned on, it kind of goes in and out and it's not quite consistent and can be a little bit distracting to the editor too. So one last thing I want to mention here, guys, is that I find that with the playhead locked in place, uh, it makes cutting the clip more efficient, more streamlined. Uh, you know, from my experience, uh, it can be quite helpful, especially if you have a lot of clips where you have to do a lot of trimming. Another feature previously only available on the cut page is the precision trim editor. So when we click on an edit point in between two clips, this will allow us to do row edit. But now when we double click on an edit point in between two clips, this will reveal a precision trim editor up top in the preview screen, which allows you to see the exact number of frames that will be changed for both the outgoing and incoming clips, hence the name precision. So if we were to, let's say right now, select like the left handle up top, this will allow you to see the exact number of frames that will be trimmed for the clip on the left. And then if we were to let's say click on the bottom right handle here, this will allow you to see the exact number of frames that will be trimmed for the incoming clip on the right. And when we click on the handle in between, that's in the middle here, this will allow us to do exactly what we did earlier, which is a row edit. And then you will be now able to see the exact number of frames that will be changed for both the outgoing and incoming clips. And to allow you to be even more precise, you can actually leverage the two buttons right underneath just in case when you manually drag the handles around, you accidentally slip. These two buttons will allow you to be very precise about the exact number of frame changes each single time, uh, whether that is for just one side of the clips or for both clips at the same time. One thing worth noting here is that the edit modes matter. So we are currently in the selection mode. When we start to make changes to uh, the outgoing clip here, you will see that we are leaving a gap as a result. But when we switch to, let's say, the trim edit mode uh, and do the same thing, you will notice that everything is now rippled. And this will apply whether that is for the outgoing uh, clip or the incoming clip, everything is going to be rippled as a result. So the point here is that edit modes will Will make a difference. Another call out I would like to make here is that when you apply a transition in between two clips, you can still use the precision trim editor. As a matter of fact, you can take advantage of that and start trimming the transition itself. And this will allow you to see exactly uh, how many frames this transition will be covering for both the outgoing and incoming clips. And another thing to note is that when you start to, let's say, make an edit, like a row edit, uh, the transition will move around uh, accordingly. But when you start to, let's say, only change one side of the clip uh, and start creating a gap, this will make the transition go away as a result. All right, guys, one last thing I want to talk about here is that you can now come to the timeline menu and start to change the background from black to something different. So you have two options, checkerboard or gray, with the checkerboard being my favorite. All right, so let's demonstrate this by uh, coming to this clip right here and start to zoom out. You will notice that this background, which is an alpha channel essentially, is showing black, which is the default. Also, when we take this clip, let's say, to the Fusion page and start to make some changes changes that is going to reveal uh, the alpha channel and now if you come back to the edit page you don't see the same thing so this can be a little bit uh, confusing and distracting to the users. 
So with that being said, let's come to the timeline menu and change the background from black to checkerboard. And then we're going to zoom out this clip again, but this time you will see the alpha background the way it's meant to be seen. Uh, so this can be extremely helpful, especially if you have a darker clip. All right, now let's uh, take this uh, clip uh, once again to the Fusion page and start to make some changes here. And that will reveal uh, the alpha channel in the background. And now if we were to, let's say, take this uh, back to the edit page, you are now able to see what you just saw in the Fusion page, which is very consistent. All right, one last thing I wanna mention here is that if we were to take this to the delivery page and uh, select the export alpha setting here, you are actually able to export the alpha in the the output regardless the background selection so uh so the thing to note here is that it is really more for visual aid all right guys i hope this helps and as always i will see you next time